This is Tom Johnson at I'd rather be writing.com. And what I'm going to show you today is a little bit different. Um, when I record video tutorials, often I, I uh, try to focus on the simulation first while I'm reading the script. And as I'm focusing on the simulation, I can't really focus on the, on the copy very well. So I'll stutter over uh, some of the words, stumble over them. I'll make mistakes, and I want to go back and polish that because, I, I don't know, corporations tend to have a higher sort of official standard for delivery, right? They're not off the cuff, extemporaneous kind of screencast. So what I do is go back and re-record that audio, and I try to match up the timing. Um, I've got a script written out, and I'll, I'll show you that script here. Um, so this is a sample script for, for some, some tutorial on setting up a calendar. And you can see that uh, it's pretty much, it's all written out. Um, and I've, I've actually gone back and made sure that w what I delivered now matches this script because I did take a little, little bit of, a few liberties as I was recording it. And you notice I've got little numbers here, like a one, a three, a two. These indicate how long I should pause uh, during that time. So if, if during the recording, as I'm doing the simulation, I say, okay, now go to settings, and then click whatever, well, I want to get that pause in there, right? So when I do this dub over using Audacity, um, I try to imitate the pauses, and, and it's not going to be exact. So now I'm at the stage where I have to try to match up the timing of the original recording with my timing of the re-recording using the more uh, focused voice. So here's how that works. I've got in Audacity the original track which I um, split off from the video track in Camtasia or just exported as, exported as a WAV file, imported it here. So this is the original track and then I, um, I re-recorded over, or not over, I recorded another track uh, reading the script, right? So it has a little bit different timing. And now my job is to match them up because eventually I want to just get rid of this first track. I want to kill it, but I got to make sure that the timing matches exactly. So first thing I notice is that I, I started a bit later um, and and you can tell that other things don't sync up. So this is, uh, this is um, somewhat tedious, but not that tedious. And I'll show you how I do it. If, if you're, you're setting, setting up, up the calendar, calendar for the, the first time, time, here are the here steps, are you, need the steps you need to follow. Step one. Step number Set one. Up. So I'm going to just remove some of the, some of the, um, I don't know, some of the timing that doesn't match and just kind of go through this. Now, it really makes a big difference when I'm, when, when I'm saying an action, like click whatever, because if you don't have the timing right there, it really gets messed up. Whereas if it's just a conceptual thing, like it is here, you know, it doesn't have to be that exact. But I'm just going to go through and keep, I'm here keep tightening are the it up. Here are the steps you need to follow. Step, step one, number one, set up locations. Set up locations. Stake administrators, Stake administrators need, to need to set up locations based on the places, on the members, places meet members meet for events. To set up locations, to set up So here, this uh, track is getting a little bit behind it. I'm going to Tighten that up a bit. Um, for events. To set, to up, set locations, up locations, stake administrators, stake administrators go, to settings, go to settings, which is the, which is gear, the gear icon, icon and, and select, select locations and, and rooms. rooms. A, a default, default list of your stake locations, locations should already appear on the, on the left. left. Select a location and click and then edit click in the middle column. In the middle column. Then you can then adjust, you can the, adjust names, the names, rooms, rooms and, equipment and equipment available, available at, at each location. location. Once locations are set up... All right, so here I've got quite a bit extra, extra time. Once, Once locations are set up, members can schedule, schedule these locations, locations when, they, when create they create events. events. This is actually matching up pretty well. Step, Step two, two, designate, designate building, building schedulers. schedulers. Stake administrators, Stake administrators designate, designate building, building schedulers, schedulers for each, for each location. location. The building scheduler can set up restrictions that limit the times each ward each can ward schedule, that, schedule building. that building. To designate a building to designate scheduler, a build so here, I'm just going to shave off a bit. To designate, to designate a, building a building scheduler, scheduler edit, edit a location, location by going to by settings, going to settings and, and selecting locations and rooms. Locations and rooms. Then select the location. Then select the location, 
and click and edit. Click so here I need to add a little bit of time. Now this this is uh, just basically copying and pasting. Um, and the only thing you have to worry about is if you copy and paste a blank spot where you're breathing, if I'm taking a breath or something, um, you could end up pasting that weird breathing sound into, into the spaces. So what I do after I match this up is I go through and kind of highlight these big blank uh, gaps and then just hit the silence button. Anyway, I'm going to keep working my way through here just to give you an overview of the like process. Location. You can see it doesn't match up exactly edit. all the time, but it's close enough. And then click, and click add, add scheduler. scheduler. And so here I'm actually giving people instructions. So I really want this to match up exactly. Um, so and, and then, then click, click add, add scheduler, scheduler and, and add, add as many building, building schedulers, schedulers for that location, location as, as you want. want. Step three. Wow. So I don't know how I timed this one to be so off, but uh, go through and match that guy up. Step three. Step three. Define, Define restrictions, restrictions for, scheduling. for scheduling. Most stakes have rules about stakes Most have stakes rules, have about, rules which about which board can schedule, schedule cultural, cultural hall and, and cultural other. Most stakes have rules about which about board which can board schedule, can the, schedule cultural the cultural hall and other rooms, and other rooms on, specific on specific weekday, weekday evenings. evenings. Building schedulers, Building schedulers can enforce can these rules by creating by reservations, reservations in the calendar. In the calendar. To create a reservation, to create a reservation, schedulers, go to settings. To create a reservation, create a reservation building schedulers, go to building settings, schedulers, go to settings, and select reservations, and select reservations. To create a reservation, building schedulers, building schedulers go, to settings, go to settings and select, and select reservations. reservations. Sometimes you don't really need to listen to it. You can just match it up visually. Then, then click, click a time, time slot, slot on the calendar, on the calendar when you want, to create, you want to create a reservation. And you can you can skip ahead, you know. This is when there are long pauses like this, it really makes it easy to distinguish between um, different segments. You, you now create... Step four, create, create the, calendars the calendars you need. You, you now create, create the, calendars the calendars you need, you need in your, in your ward, ward and stake. stake. Remember, Remember that the LDS.org LDS calendar, calendar offers not just one calendar, but as many, but as calendars, many calendars as you want. As you, want. You, can you can create a calendar for, calendar for each organization, organization quorum, or, or group. Or group. To create calendars in bulk, to create calendars go in to bulk. settings, go to It shouldn't really take me more than 20 minutes to line all this up. And, and select, then select initial, initial setup. setup. You can create the default calendar. You know, and it, it actually takes a lot of the pressure off your delivery because then you, you don't, I mean, when you're recording it, you know that you can go back and fix everything. You can, you can create, create the default, default calendars highlighted, highlighted in blue by, by selecting the checkboxes check if necessary and clicking, clicking save, save calendars. calendars. And this is only about a three minute script. You can also click add you can new also calendar. All right, so I'm gonna give this a little more. You know, Audacity just makes it really easy. I know you can edit within like Camtasia or other software itself, but it's nowhere near as easy. You, you can, can also, also click add, add new calendar, calendar to create and custom, custom calendars. calendars. As you're as creating, creating calendars, calendars note, that note that state administrators, administrators have rights, rights to create and manage state calendars, state calendars whereas, whereas ward administrators, administrators have rights, rights to create and manage ward calendars. Ward calendars. Step, five, Step five, import, import events, events from another, from another calendar. calendar. If you've entered a lot of events if you've on another a lot calendar, of event you've entered a lot of events on another calendar. You've entered, you've entered a lot, a of, lot events of events on another calendar, on another calendar either the classic either calendar, the classic or, another calendar, calendar or another calendar that uses the iCal, that format. Uses the iCal format. You can import these events Google into the calendar. new calendar. Once you, you can import, import these events, events into you can the select new LGS. calendar. So I actually added some words here that weren't in the original script. Um, that phrase, such as Google Calendar, just uh, thought it 
read a little bit better with that example. Oops. And so, um, I don't have that much time. Obviously, you don't want to create too, I mean, you don't want to take up too if much of the space. If you've entered a lot of because you could end up ruining your events, events another, another, calendar. another calendar. If you've entered, if you've a, lot entered a lot of events on another calendar, calendar either, either the classic, classic calendar, calendar or another, or another calendar, calendar that uses, that uses the iCal format, iCal format. You can so import these events calendar. into the new calendar. You can import Once these you import events, events into the new LDS. You can select calendars calendar. you want to transfer them to. Once you import events, so now it's getting kind of out of sync quite a bit, um, and that's okay because I'm just explaining a concept here. I'm not actually giving a demo of uh, anything. I'm not really telling them to click anything here. So the new you can import these events. Once you import into events, new LDS you can select calendars you, you want to events, transfer them to. You can select calendars to that import you want events. To the event. Go to settings and select to import, import your event. event. But now, now it's really kind of getting out of hand here. So I think I may end up just deleting that phrase that I added. Um, format. format. You so can import Google these events calendar. into the. It's that phrase right there that getting it all out of sync. So oh well. I'll format. I'll format. You can import, you can import these the events. Okay, so see, it gets a little bit tricky sometimes. You, you can, can import these events into, into the new calendar. The new once you import calendar. events, once you import you can select events, calendars you, select you want to transfer that you want to transfer the events to import events. To import go to your settings and go to select. Set. All right, now it's now it's quite a bit more in sync. You know, if you have good pauses in places, it really makes it easy to. To to import events. You import your go events. Settings, go to settings. And select import and select event. Wow, but still, I'm having a lot of trouble right here. Okay. To import to events. Import your events. Go to settings. Go to settings and select, and select import, import events. events. I could zoom in a bit too. And if you ever want to hear something all by itself, you just click this little solo. To import your events, go to settings and select. So you notice how you can just take spaces out of there and it doesn't even really matter? It sounds just quite natural. To, to, import, to import events, your events go, to settings, go to settings and select, and select import, import events. events. There we go. A lot happier with that. Any events? And I'm almost coming to the end here. If you're still hanging out, <laughs> you must really... Be interested the events in on the classic calendar, calendar will automatically appear, appear here, here for you to import. import. If you're importing, if you're importing from, from another calendar, calendar click, click import, import iCal, iCal files. files. All right. So now I've matched it all up. I can get rid of this first file. And now I'm going to uh, export this one. So this is going under setting up where are you ah there we go and I'm going to change this file I'll call it dub over I just export it as an mp3 now I'm going to go back into Camtasia and I'm going to basically replace the existing audio with this dubbed over audio. All right, so I don't need Audacity anymore. Don't need, uh, oops, don't need Word anymore. Let me bring back Camtasia. and position it a little bit. There we go, so you can see. So down here, this is the original recording, right? And uh, it's got, whoops, go back to the beginning. Up the calendar for the, it's got the, the original audio track. So basically select it, control click, and choose separate audio and video. Then I'm gonna just going to delete all the, the audio. And actually, you know, you have to do it for every one of these tracks. So I'm going to hit Control A because I've already, I guess, edited this a bit. And hit Control, whoops. Oh, yeah, separate audio from video. 
And I'm just going to delete, shift click and delete all these uh, audio segments. Okay, so now hit Command I and import my new file. Let's see, it was calendar screencast, setting up the calendar. Whoops, didn't mean to double click that guy. Let's try that again. Setting up the calendar, and here's my new voice track. So I want to put this at the beginning of the timeline, and I just, uh, you know, you can drag it. I'll just drag it down there. It's all one big nice it's all one nice big track and let's just let's just test a few places where I know that I'm telling a user to, to go, which is the gear icon, and select locations and rooms. You can tell that's in sync. A default list of your stake locations should already appear on the left. Select a location and click edit in the middle column. Then you can adjust the names, rooms, and equipment available at each location. Once locations are... So you can uh, go through here. I'm not going to play the entire sort of thing, but we can do a few more little quick spot checks. Step four, create the calendar. Uh, that's a conceptual part. Let's see. Go to settings and select initial setup. Yep, you can see it's all in you sync. You can create the default calendars highlighted in blue by selecting the checkboxes, if necessary, and clicking Save Calendars. You can also click Add New Calendar to create custom calendars. As you're creating calendar, so you can see how it all it all matches up. It's pretty seamless. I mean, you can't really tell that that it's been dubbed over like that. 